destroyed everything. All right, guys, we are back in Solo Learn doing CSS Fundamentals. I'm kind of excited about this course because a lot of times CSS kind of just goes on the back burner, even though it's so crucial. I mean, look at how many people have done the HTML course and then how many people have done the, the CSS course. And you can kind of tell from right there that they, they should, in theory, be equal, but it's about one-fourth as many. Um, but let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, I'm actually pretty bad with CSS myself, so I'm excited to be doing this. I feel like I'll, I'm going to learn a lot, um, mainly uh, on every section of this, to be honest, so I need to get better. Uh, I can't be a web developer and be bad at CSS. Let's go ahead and take a shortcut. So the style conventions of selector property and... Wait, what? We're just jumping in? There we go, oh, okay, my bad. We needed to do the basics. We're in the basics, what is CSS? CSS refers to cascading style sheets used with HTML to style things. Uh, control the look and the feel of web documents is how you would display it. All formatting can and should be removed from the HTML documents to a separate CSS file. So in theory, you want to not use the inline styling or throw style tags. Web pages and web applications get way too complicated to be doing things like that. Um, so that's that's why you're going to have your own page. It allows for the separation of style and content. Very clearly put and very well, very well put as well. Inline CSS. So what we were just talking about where you can put an inline CSS to the tag. Typically, you're probably going to want to sign a class or an item. Inline, you don't really use that. So inline is just style. Uh, to do that, to put inline styling. Um, you also use the style tags as they have here, but again, typically your styling is going to go in its own uh, pro a problem. Um, you're going to put those tags in the head when you're uh, when you're defining things as well. So you see right here, we're linking our file before we had our our style tag. Um, just going. So we want to link the rail style sheet, the href is test.css, and then we want to close our head as well for the proper structure. Cool. CSS rules and selectors. So you have your selector, in this case it's a h1, then you have the property, and then you have the value. Pretty straightforward. This colon is basically equal signs if, it, if you want to think of it as a variable. Um, so the selector uh, selects which element to style. There's types of selectors, so you see red, color red, font size, it depends on what you're doing. So rearrange, so things. All right, so you have your selector, then you have your property and the value, and then you have your closing tag as well. And then you can use IDs and uh, classes. IDs are denoted by a hashtag. Classes are denoted by the dot. So we want to have an element ID with our background, give the, fill in the blanks, give the background color element with ID intro. So yellow. So like I said, uh, intro is hashtag, dot is class. And uh, you would not believe how often I forgot that when I just started out. <laughs> so if I say that a lot, it's because I've said it a lot for about a year or two before it finally stuck into me. I had to stop looking at what was an ID and what was a class. Let's see. So you can kind of level your stuff, right? So um, you can use the ID, and if the ID intro here, and that's what's going on with this right here, the, the ID intro, if there's a first class nested within our div or within our intro, and it's an M right here, go ahead and style it like so, as you can see it does right here. Um, so you can nest your kind of uh, logic as well. Let's go ahead, fill in blanks for style rule belonging to element ID with test. So we have an ID, that's test. So everything within test, that's a paragraph tag. We want to go ahead and style. Cool. So comments. Uh, comments are basically uh, multi-line only. Uh, so that's kind of how that works. So you have your little asterisk or your slash asterisk, asterisk, slash. 
Cool, cool. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's Cascading style shoes. Sound like something dropped above my head. <laughs> uh, cascading style sheets. Uh, three main sources of style information that form a cascade are the author of the page, browser's default styles, and by the user. Okay. The three different sources are responsible for the styles you see on the web page. User custom style selections, if any. Style sheet created by the author of the page. The default styles of the browser itself. There we go. And inheritance. So inheritance, let's, let's read the technical definition just so I can make sure I understand it. Inheritance refers to the way properties flow throughout the page. A child element will usually take on the characteristics of the parent element. Okay, so um, in our example here, what's basically happening is our body is, we're defining our body, and basically everything's within the body, and it's inheriting those values. So the paragraph tag is going to inherit, inherit the color green and the font family Arial because the body has that set up. Now, if we set something in paragraph, it would override that. All right, what color does the paragraph tag have? So we have, so you'll see right here. So body, but my div's red, thus the div is going to, or the stuff within the div is gonna be red. Cool, module one quiz. From the three types, which one is the most useful in terms of webs website optimization? I'm just gonna go external because uh, I think that's right. Now there, there might be something that's different where it maybe actually loads better on inline, but I don't think so. What is the style when creating an internal CSS? So uh, what is the style when creating an internal CSS? What is the style when creating an internal cascading style sheets? Property? I don't understand. I see this problem here is I don't really actually fully understand. Whoa, what's going on here? Let's jump back into here for a second. What is the style when creating an internal cascading style sheet? I right, said property tag. Nothing. There we go. All right, sorry, sorry guys. I don't really understand what they're asking there. Um, if somebody wants to explain that in the comments below, that'd be helpful for those who watch this to kind of learn. Um, style definition rule consists of selector, property, and value. Cool. And last but not least, fill in the blank to fly color white. Bam. Not too shabby. Uh, we have got the basics done of our cascading style sheets. We got six more to go. Um, I'm excited for this stuff down here because I really think I'm gonna learn a lot. Um, working with text is up next, but as always guys, uh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share, and look forward to our weekly developer interviews on Friday mornings called Behind the Code. Lots of great stuff in that. And if you wanna support me, go to patreon.com slash codingtutorial360. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding bootcamp check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and support me on patreon i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching